Well, the first one I always start out with because it's one of the most world renowned, it's one of the most popular, and that is because it has such a broad spectrum of benefits. Okay, so it's called ashwagandha, and I'm gonna give you a couple of nicknames here uh, that have been translated, which I love. So my, my, my favorite, ashwagandha, because uh, it has a distinct smell to it, is called the smell of a horse. So that's literally, that is one of its nicknames, the smell of the horse. Some people say it smells like a horse. Some people say it gives you the strength of a horse. Um, I would say probably more like the smell of a horse. But let's get into that. So um, other nicknames for it is uh, Nature's Xanax, because it's very calming and sedating. Uh, the actual Latin name, I believe it's the Latin name, is Withania somnifera. Uh, and it also goes by Indian ginseng. So if you've heard of Panax ginseng, you've heard of Siberian ginseng before, those are all great. This is Indian ginseng. And uh, also as winter cherry as well. So the way that it works is it uh, just like ginger has its own little isolates specifically within ginger, uh, ashwagandha, remember, comes from the name withania, uh, somnifera, has high amounts of withaniolides. And these specific plant compounds um, help to calm the mind, calm the body, calm the nervous system, enhance the libido, enhance the energy-based systems of the body. The way that this works is actually by working with the HPA axis. So your body and your brain give positive and negative feedback loops. That means when your body is stressed, you're saying, okay, produce more stress hormone, right? Produce more norepinephrine, produce more aldosterone, produce more cortisol. And there's more to it, of course, than that. You can be producing higher levels of um, dopamine, et cetera. But the body is reacting with more stress hormones. And then when the stress is over, we hope that it's over soon, then the body is supposed to get the signal now stress is calmed, reduce cortisol, reduce norepinephrine, reduce aldosterone. The problem is many of us live in a life of chronic pain, chronic suffering, chronic emotional stress, et cetera. And that's why we have to, again, work on those lifestyle-wise. But what ashwagandha can do is to help to dampen that effect of stress, to help our HPA access function at a much more normal level. So it's been shown to help reduce stress and anxiety. And these are all may, by the way. We, we have to say this uh, from a clinical perspective. We have to say all of these are they may reduce stress and anxiety. They may help with symptoms of depression. They may help boost muscle mass and strength and endurance. They may help improve testosterone and fertility in men. They may reduce blood sugar. It may reduce blood sugar levels. It might have anti-cancer properties. It may reduce inflammation. It may lower bad cholesterol and triglycerides, and it may improve overall brain function. There are actually studies done with Alzheimer's, with stress, you name it. And you can absolutely just, again, I've, I did a specific show on ashwagandha episode 770. I would definitely, again, just tune into stephencabral.com forward slash 1705. I'll link up all the adaptogens I've talked about before, including the traditional Chinese medicine ones. And I will, and uh, again, some of the Native American ones. I will also link up episode 770 just on ashwagandha. It's honestly, it's that important of an herb that I gave it its own Friday review as a super nutrient uh, because it's used in so many functional medicine formulas that take the best of Ayurveda. So we've used it in our Adrenal Soothe. We've used it in our fat loss products. Like we're, we're huge believers in it because the research is there. So we know that it worked in Ayurveda and has worked for 6,000 years. And we know that it's published scientific research that it works. So again, uh, ashwagandha, really great product, really great adaptogen, good place to start, okay? But you don't have to just use one. I'm going to share you some more with you because typically they work better. Um, adaptogens work better as synergies. So you'll see oftentimes ashwagandha mixed with some of the other ones I'm about to speak about as well, as well as the Siberian ginseng I've talked about. Uh, L-theanine, maybe even phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylserine, I should say, uh, which helps to dampen those cortisol levels as well. Really help out with that stress response, helps with sleep, etc.